journey mapping is either a major initiative or, or a series of many initiatives. And uh, anytime that you're bringing people together, always be thinking about what needs to happen afterward and how do we set that up from the beginning in terms of people's expectations, commitment, and then uh, you know the, the hooks that, that uh, keep it rolling. For example, you have existing recognition, you have existing um, incentives of various type, you have existing reviews. Um, you know, there's all kinds of existing rituals, as I call them, in, in running a business. These rituals are things that you do that aren't necessarily about creating the solution and delivering the solution to the customer, but they're things that you do for teamwork, meetings and um, uh, development and uh, reviews and, and, on, and so on. So make sure that all of your necessary follow-up is embedded into those types of rituals don't just create something new, uh, inject this work and, and what you need for momentum into existing things. So along with that, I think that planning for your destination means that the people who are facilitating these workshops, uh, even you know any aspect of customer experience, it's important that, that these people have facilitation skills that are very strong, not just meeting facilitation, but facilitating ownership. How do you uh, facilitate accountability? And how do you facilitate cross-organizational collaboration in the moment, as well as on an ongoing basis? That's a different skill set than most of us have, but it's really an important one for people to pick up. If they're in a customer experience role, a marketing, uh, employee experience, partner experience role, these these uh, talents are things that might have been nice to have in the 2010s, but in the 2020s and going forward, they're must-have skills. So second, wear the proper shoes. By this, I mean step into your employees or customers or partner shoes, whoever you're doing this map for, and understand exactly how they see things. This means that before doing any kind of mapping, you ought to uh, take a look at, at um, what makes these people tick. Uh, what are the things that they, that, uh, that they talk about and what are the pressures on them? Um, so basically, uh, whatever research you need to do to create an empathy map, in fact, empathy mapping might be even a precursor to journey mapping, because until you really stand in their shoes, you might be creating your own journey or a faux journey, not a true journey for that uh, particular uh, group group that you're doing it for. So how do they see, think here? What is the context? What are the uh, expectations they have? What is their ultimate outcome uh, intended from interfacing with your brand? What are the consequences that they face when things go well or don't go well? Until you have these things pretty well understood, it makes no sense to put things on, a, on the wall because you really don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so make sure you're wearing the proper shoes so you don't get those uh, nasty, uh, um, yeah, what do you call a uh, swelling in, in your feet and, and uh, poor, poor uh, journey. The third step is to know your route. So by this, I mean getting a lay of the land from the end to end. What is it that sparks a journey for employees or for partners or for customers? And what, what what is the point when they say, hey, my journey's done? It's not just when you want to upgrade or discontinue a service or a product. It's their, their journey lasts until the point they say, hey, I'm off this journey now. <laughs> so try to understand the end-to-end -end route that they are taking. And this will help you to drill down to the specific parts of journeys or the specific personas that make the most sense financially and also pain-wise for uh, your employees, customers, and partners, whoever you're, you're journey mapping for. So those drill downs should are usually happening prematurely, just out of uh, convenience or uh, quick wins, but they may not really be the areas where you're going to get the highest ROI. So if you can do the end-to-end the -end look first, 
that will be very informative of where you can get the biggest bang for your buck, as we say here in the US. Additionally, uh, know those gaps. What are the gaps that customers face? What are the, the gaps in your, your uh, team's uh, abilities to understand and to also so to carry out the whole work? So whenever you're looking at a route, you want to know what your gaps are and create backup plans, right? If there's extra traffic on this route, we're going to do a, a workaround uh, to, to address that gap by uh, diverting to this, this other path momentarily and then coming back. So really know your route. <laughs> Fourth, manage your fuel efficiently. By this, I mean that when you bring people together for a workshop, they're there for a finite time. They're giving all of their attention and energy to it. And then they have a lot of other things on their plate after that, right? So this is a precious moment for you to really make the best use of that uh, attention and energy. Don't waste the workshop by brainstorming things that you should have been researching in the first place and getting in, in the employee's words, the partner's words, or the customer's words. Why, why uh, reinvent the wheel? I say come to your workshop with a mock-up of the, the map already completed based on the research. Then you can use the precious time where you have um, representatives from different groups in one room to absorb, to adopt, to apply, and to create accountability measures and, and uh, processes for how you're going to make a difference for these employees, customers, or partners that you're mapping for. So manage that fuel efficiently by thinking through what is the best use of their time? How do we uh, really generate camaraderie for cross-organizational collaboration that's going to last? Uh, how do we spend some time in, during this workshop thinking about next steps in depth, not just as a, a closing item, but how about taking a couple of hours talking about next steps? How are we going to be implementing things? How are we going to be checking on things? How are we going to be following up? And what are our uh, backup plans if you know something crazy happens, like a pandemic or a, a hurricane or whatever that might, or an org change that might derail us? How do we keep things on track despite those types of pressures? So fifth, you want to also take selfies. Anytime that you're on a, a, a trip, you're going to be taking selfies and posting those on Facebook or wherever, Instagram. Um, this means in journey mapping, self-assess where you're at frequently. Have some checks and balances. Create review panels or, or whatever. Uh, check in with customers frequently. <laughs> check in with your employees or partners that you're, you're journey mapping. Um, this is agile, right? So you want to be doing a continual check-ins uh, with various parties to make sure that you keep on track and also to celebrate the, the, the uh, progress along the way and course correct as needed. And finally, when you have uh, implemented what you're mapping, this is the, the time that you're at the beach. You need to detox and you need to thrive, which means letting go of the old habits in total and actually uh, thriving with the new habits that the journey mapping has taught you. So making the things that you're discovering through journey mapping more of a way of life for the future, not just a blip, not just a, a, a program or a campaign, but really making enduring change happen. This change is going to be enjoyed by you it's going to be enjoyed by whoever you're doing the mapping for, first and foremost. It's also going to be enjoyed by your investors and leadership. And uh, that's what it's really all about, right? <laughs> it's pulling together all, fa all reasons that we're aiming to do these uh, journey maps, creating a better experience as well as the financial gains and the loyalty that, that uh, is necessary toward that.